Each section of the U.S. has its own colorful phrases and colloquialisms. And the southern U.S. is no exception. For instance, I could eat the north end of a southbound polecat means you're mighty hungry. And if you're not mighty hungry, but only pretty much so, you can substitute the word horse for polecat. And then there's all over hell and half of Georgia, as in, I can't find my keys, I've looked all over hell and half of Georgia for them, which means a very large area. My parents glowed with pride when they heard people say about us kids, y'all say frog and they jump and on the way up they ask how high, meaning we were well-behaved kids. Got your feathers ruffled means you're upset and pouting. Go hog wild means have a good time. Either fish or cut bait means work or make way for those who will. And I do declare usually means nothing whatsoever. <laughs> but keep your fork, honey. While growing up, those words were music to my ears. And they still are, actually. Those words meant that no matter how good the meal was, and no matter how full I might have been, despite the fact that I may have gone back for seconds on the mashed potatoes and gravy and eaten way too many hot buttered rolls, there was still more to come. And not only that, but it was the best part of the meal. The best was yet to come, dessert. It might be a helping of buttery sweet pecan pie or a slice of fresh baked triple layer chocolate cake. It might be any number of desserts you never knew, but it just didn't matter because when plates were gathered that had been licked clean and you thought it just couldn't get any better and you heard the words, keep your fork, honey, you knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that the best part of the meal was about to be unveiled. God is saying just that in this morning's reading from the book of Jeremiah. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says God, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. God was reminding the people of Israel that their future was a future of pecan pie and chocolate cake. So they needed to just hold on to their forks or they would miss the best part of the meal. This church Central Texas MCC has enjoyed its own time at the dinner table of God's love and grace. It hasn't always been easy, but in retrospect, you can probably say it's been good. The supper table was laid out 27 years ago in 1986. That's the same year that Space Shuttle Challenger disintegrated 73 seconds after launch killing the crew of seven astronauts, including school teacher Krista McAuliffe. That was the year of the Chernobyl disaster, a mishandled safety test at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in the Soviet Union killed at least 4,056 people and damaged almost $27 billion of property. That was the year of hands across America. At least five million people formed a human chain from New York City to Long Beach, California to raise money to fight hunger and homelessness. In that year, the Oprah Winfrey Show made its debut on national television. Out of Africa won the best picture of the year and the song of the year was We Are the World. Lots of stuff was happening. And in the midst of it all, tucked away in Waco, Texas, USA of all places, a group of four or five people began to meet for worship in the back room of a local club and continued to meet wherever possible, in private homes or even in the park. And in May of that year, that group was recognized by Metropolitan Community Churches as a new work 
and it took on the name of MCC Waco. This congregation has met at different locations over the years. At a small storefront on South 8th Street, at another location at the corner of 5th Street and Austin Avenue, and finally moving to its current location in 1992. You have enjoyed a number of pastors over the years and maybe even one or two who you have not enjoyed so much until I arrived in November 1999 around Thanksgiving. You've had your challenges, but over the years you've made a difference in the community. Even while groups and organizations have come and gone in the LGBT community of Waco, you have remained steady. And I think that's because you have kept your eyes on God and on God's call to, min to ministry for you. HIV has always been a ministry focus for you. You operated a food pantry for the local HIV community which was eventually taken over by the McLennan County Health Department and existed up until shortly after I had arrived. But in January of 2006, you and I and the Waco community decided to give a shot at reopening the pantry. And in addition to the pantry, we offer support groups for people living with HIV. Thanks to your generosity and the ger generosity of friends of our church, we have continued to serve the HIV community ever since. If we didn't do anything else, then that would be enough. To serve the HIV population, especially in a politically and religiously conservative town like Waco, to be the only church to offer HIV specific services to the community would be enough. But it's not enough, is it? God continually draws us into a future of bigger and better things. It's like a multi-course meal in which you are served one dish after another, sure that it just can't get any better until the next plate of food is set before you and you realize it can, it can get better. Together you and I have heard the call of God draw, drawing us beyond HIV ministry into a ministry for the transgender community. We continue to educate ourselves and hold discussions around the topics of gender identity and gender nonconformity and I look forward to a future in which we are able to offer space for support groups for the transgender community. But in the meantime, our church website is becoming an ever-expanding clearinghouse of information for our trans siblings, providing contact information for financial aid, for legal services, for health care and counseling, and more. You and I have also built bridges in this community that no one would have thought possible. Last week, I was elected as vice president of the Greater Waco Interfaith Conference, a group whose purpose is to promote harmony, understanding, cooperation, and respect among the variety of faith traditions in Waco and the surrounding area. And this coming week, I will have the opportunity to speak to another batch of Baylor World Religion students about metropolitan community churches and my life as an out gay Christian. And by the way, anyone is invited to join me. If you would like to know how respectful dialogue around the area of homosexuality in the Bible take, can take place, this is a good place to see it firsthand. We have become known for more than the fact that we welcome people of all sexual orientations and gender identities. We have become known for more than our HIV ministry. We have become known as a church dedicated to peace and justice and human rights. And that's something to be happy about. Great things have happened at this church over the last 27 years and great things still await us. 
as we look back over the past, it's tempting to say, enough, no more. We're doing enough. We're just a small group of people, after all. We can't take on anymore. Let's rest and let this settle a while. But God looks at us with a twinkle and a smile and says, keep your fork, honey. You see, we aren't anywhere close to being finished yet. The best is yet to come. It's hard to imagine that it could get any better, but it does. So don't push away from the table just yet. Stick around and watch the miracle that God has in store for us. I promise you'll be glad you did. Amen.